Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Attorney General Chris Mays is the state's chief law enforcement officer and she is currently dealing with a number of law enforcement issues, ranging from an investigation into a state contractor with ties to the governor to questions over just who has the authority to request execution warrants in the state. Joining us now is Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays. Good to see you again. You too, Ted. Thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. It's There's a lot going on. You're yeah. a busy person. <laughs> Thanks for making some time for us. I know you got things going on. And Always. And this includes this $115 million uh, from the opioid settlement going to prisons. You're not happy about it. I mean, you, you, you filed suit about this. What's going on here? So this, I mean, this is really important. I think it's important to the state of Arizona. And I unfortunately had to sue um, essentially the governor and the legislature to try to stop them from sweeping $115 million of the state's opioid settlement funds, which are supposed to go to help us um, address the opioid and fentanyl crisis to prevent future addiction, to treat folks, to buy naloxone and Narcan, and to save lives. And uh, so unfortunately, the governor and the legislature decided during this budget process um, to what I think uh, is essentially backfill the Department of Corrections budget with this opioid money. I don't think it's a proper use of the opioid funds. Um, I disagreed with them about that. It was clear from their statements uh, that that's what they were doing during the budget process. And so I sued to try to stop that sweep. I was not successful, as you know. Indeed. Uh, and you, you basically argued that this kind of sweep, this kind of use of the money, breaks the settlement agreement. How so? Well, I think potentially it puts at risk the settlement agreement because um, the settlements that we, the state of Arizona, and frankly, primarily was under my my uh, predecessor, Mark Burnovich. As you know, I don't uh, often say awesome things about him. I'm, I'm not a big fan, but w one thing I will say is he negotiated some settlement agreements with the pharmaceutical companies, think Johnson & Johnson, CVS, the pharmacies, the manufacturers, the distributors, um, that were, and those settlement agreements that were approved by, I think, six or seven different judges here in Arizona said that the attorney general, whoever the AG is for the next 18 years, shall direct the, the use of these, or the, the, the expenditures of these opioid funds the legislature may appropriate, uh, but the AG is supposed to put forward an expenditure plan. I did not put forward an expenditure plan that included 115 million of the money going to our prison system. And yet the governor's office, and in respect the judge, the judge said it was clear, that it was clear that the legislature had the responsibility as far as appropriating his funds. How, how do we square that? I don't know, because I just think he was wrong. I, I, and, and it's unfortunate that, you know, because actually he had one of the consent decrees. One of the, one of the, one of the cases was his, so it was a little confusing. Um, he, he signed off on one of the consent decrees that, that uh, stated that the AG shall direct the, the use of the funds. Hopefully we can get back to uh, normalcy, you know, next year. I don't know if we're going to get there, but um, I felt that it was my duty to protect Arizonans, to fight for Arizonans. Look, this legislature and the governor could have used the rainy day fund to fill their budget gap. They could have tried to uh, rein in the out of control voucher uh, program, which is draining our budget of a billion dollars. They could have dealt with the flat tax, which is you know making rich people richer. But instead they used the opioid funds, which are supposed to save Arizonans' lives to backfill their budget gap. And yet the argument on the other side is they will be used to save these particular Arizonans are incarcerated. Is there is was there a proper was there an OK amount for you yeah. to go there? I mean, 115 million now out of 195, I think, over four years is a yeah. total deal. But what, what number would have worked for you? Uh, I was proposing 10 million dollars. And at one point, it was our understanding that the governor was fine with that. And all of a sudden, at the in the 11th hour of the budget process, when they were desperate to get a budget together, 
uh, the Senate president and the governor and the, the House speaker came up with 115 million. And I think the important part of the thing to, the important thing to remember is this is almost, almost a third of Arizona's total state share of the opioid money. Now, counties and cities get their own share. They get a little bit north of 50 percent of, of the opioid funds. But the state share, that's a big portion of the state share that now is just going directly to backfill a budget of the prison system. And we're not even, we, we haven't even been shown proof that it is going to be used for opioid-related purposes. Have you heard from the governor? Have you heard from legislative leaders? Um, yeah, we've been in conversations uh, with the governor's office. I will, I will say that, you know, obviously we have a disagreement here and we lost that court case. But I will never, Ted, stop fighting for the proper use of these opioid funds. I'll never stop fighting for rural Arizona. You know, that's who I think is gonna uh, lose out on this. My expenditure plan had this money spread out all throughout Arizona, not just going to our prison system, but going to places like Mojave County, um, going throughout Arizona. We need, desperately, our rural communities need detox centers, we need, um, school counselors who can who can talk about you know the fentanyl crisis. Uh, this should have been spread throughout the state of Arizona. Unfortunately, it was not. Last point on this, I think you called it a slap in the face for rural Arizona. Um, does this set a precedent as far as these kinds of settlements are concerned? Um, I, what I worry about is that next year the legislature is going to come in and just do the same thing all over again. That they're going to see this pot of money that really should be used for fighting our fentanyl crisis and they're going to use it to backfill a budget deficit. So yeah, I'm worried about it going forward. You and the Maricopa County attorney uh, seem to have a different idea on who can request uh, execution warrants. What is this all about? She says that she's an attorney, she's acting on behalf of the state. You say it's all you and not her. Well, that's the way it's been done for about 50 years. I mean, our research shows that uh, it has always been the attorney general who has issued a request for an execution uh, a warrant uh, to, the to the Arizona Supreme Court. No county attorney has ever tried to do this before, Ted. It's actually, I would use the word bizarre, um, you, you can imagine the chaos and, and, and havoc that would be created if 15 county attorneys tried to start issuing requests for warrants. Um, uh, there is also state law that says that only the attorney general shall uh, represent the state of Arizona in front of the Arizona Supreme Court. So we obviously disagree with uh, the Maricopa County attorney. I would say this, it's also ridiculous given the fact that I have said we are going to start issuing execution warrants in essentially January or shortly thereafter anyway. So we're talking about six months at this point. And that's because of this, this suspension uh, as far as capital punishment in Arizona, because you want to review the process and see, is that review over with? Have you seen, have, have whoever's looking seen what they want to see? Yeah, so we, I'm a little bit disappointed in the amount of time this independent review has taken. I did join with the governor in, uh, calling for an independent review of the death penalty. We put that in the hands of Judge Duncan. I thought it was going to be done in a year, so that would have been at the end of 2020, uh, essentially 2023. Um, it wasn't done. Um, so I'm, I, I am um, feeling fi pr pretty assured by the fact that uh, that the director of the prison system, Ryan Thornell, says he's operationally ready to move forward with ex executions. And Judge Duncan has been giving us, you know, midterm uh, review notes uh, on his investigation. County attorney, though, says that you are dragging your feet and thus it is justice denied. How do you respond? Uh, I mean, we're talking about six months at this point, Ted. So I think that's, that's kind of um, silly. And also, again, it's a waste of taxpayer dollars uh, to try to take this to the Arizona Supreme Court. 
you and the county attorney are also involved in this investigation regarding this group home that has ties to the governor, has ties to the Democratic Party, of which you are a, a member. Um, she says, it's, let's, let's, let's do parallel investigations. I've, I've got a responsibility. You've got a responsibility. Auditor General. Everyone's got a responsibility here. How many <laughs> investigations are we going to do on this thing? Well, I, again, I think a waste of taxpayer dollars on her part. You know, I guess she, she can do that if she wants to. I don't think her office is actually very well suited to do this kind of an investigation. I immediately, as soon as Senator T.J. Shope uh, referred this over to our office, I immediately said that we would move forward with the investigation of, of this uh, particular situation involving uh, the governor. Um, and, um, you know, that's what we're going to do. Didn't, didn't he also ask for Rachel Mitchell to be involved yeah, as well? Yeah, that was a little, a little strange, but, yeah. you know, he sort of dual referred it, I guess, I'm wondering. Got a dual investigation would, now. I mean, yeah, it, again, not a proper uh, and, and optimal use of taxpayer dollars. Was it a proper and optimal use of um, getting out these funds? The state contractor now seeing a 60% increase, and in, no other group saw that kind of an increase. There is a connection to the governor. There is a connection to the inaugural fund. There is a connection to Democratic Party with these people donating and now being top of the heap as far as rates are concerned. Um, smoke, fire, what do we got here? You know, I really am not going to comment on the investigation. As I said, we are doing a real and a serious investigation into this matter. So I'm, as, as I as I did with the with another case that you've asked me about a few times, and you'll probably ask me again. Stand by. Yes, yeah, stand by. <laughs> um, I'm ready. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to discuss it until we'll have results. We'll we will release those to the public and. You know, we have very professional, very good investigators in-house at the AG's office. To that end, though, I mean, how do you respond to those who say, mostly Republicans now, but they're saying this, you need to recuse yourself. These folks donated to the Democratic Party, of which you are a member. Um, it's a conflict of interest. You need to get out of the way. Let the Maricopa County Attorney's Office, Auditor Jen, all the, let them take over. Well, if it was a conflict for me to investigate any Democrat, um, then I wouldn't do 50% of the cases that we do, right? I mean, it's absurd to say that I can't investigate somebody just because they're a Democrat or I can't investigate somebody just because they're a Republican. You know, I am the attorney general and I run an office of a thousand amazing professional, uh, you know, uh, career uh, investigators and lawyers. And they're going to do a, a, a good job, a solid job, and we'll re release our results when we're done. And the, well, I saw one criticism saying DCS is a state agency. You represent state agencies. You got to get out of the way. Well, we, we took... Uh, steps to screen DCS off. We uh, told DCS they needed to get their own attorneys, so we are not representing them on this matter, um, and took other steps and, and established other screens to make sure that we can do the investigation. Last question on this. How do you make sure duplication doesn't... You had two investigations here, pretty solid investigations. How, how do you make sure you're not walking all over each other? Uh, well, you know, that's the problem. I mean, we, you know, we may. Um, you know, so far, I haven't seen any evidence of that. We're doing our investigation. I think it, it sounds like uh, the county attorney is relying on the auditor general to... to she's sort of outsourced it to the auditor general. I mm -hmm. mean, that's fine. Um, I would suspect will be done before the county attorney is because of that. All right. Time now for the traditional question. Fake electors case. Where are it's everyone's now plea. We got arraignments yeah. for everyone now. Are, are you as best as you can tell me? Are you expecting some plea offers? Are you expect, expecting some plea? De I, what, what can we look forward to? Is this going to be a, a dark hole here for a while until something happens? No, actually, uh, number one, yes, uh, I do anticipate plea agreements. Um, and so I would say watch this space. Um, and, uh, it, you know, we have um, a fantastic and very um, well-regarded uh, criminal division chief who's handling this case. Um, and, um, you know, there'll be motions, you know, that are filed over the next few months. Um, we'll be ready for trial in October. We don't really think that the trial will happen in October because of all the motions that are going to be filed. Uh, defendants cooperating so far? You know, I really don't want to talk about that on television. So, um, 
Okay. You know, right. uh, as I said, we expect plea agreements. So, okay, so we keep, as you said, uh, watch this space. The critics, though, and it's still out there, and they're mostly, again, Republicans, and a lot of these folks are running for office, a lot of these folks are MAGA, they're election deniers, they're the whole nine yards here. They're saying you are uh, participating in lawfare. You are going after your, all these folks that you're going after, they're no friends of yours, so that's what you're doing. Well, but we just talked about that investigation I'm doing into the governor. So I'm also uh, doing an investigation into um, the Apache uh, County attorney, mm. who is a Democrat. Um, so I think if you look at the record, the record shows that we follow the law. We follow the facts where they take us. Um, and I don't even know what lawfare means. I mean, that's just another sort of uh, fake term that somebody made up and put on Twitter. So, you know, uh, we... we uh, we do these investigations regardless of, of a person's political affiliation. Before we go, we got about a minute left here. Um, abortion in Arizona. It sounds, 1864, it's, it's adios. It sounds like it's gone here. But you still got some abortion laws in here that seem to be confusing folks. What's the confusion? What are you telling them? Yeah, so we still are living under a 15-week abortion ban with no exceptions for rape or incest, Ted. And, you know, I've had now conversations with, you know, 50 or 60 doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and chief medical officers at hospitals who are on a nightly basis dealing with emergency pregnancy situations after 15 weeks in which the doctors in the emergency rooms are literally having to call their lawyers and ask them, am I going to get prosecuted if I try to save this woman's life? I literally had a doctor look at me and say, General Mays, will you prosecute me or how close to death do I have to allow a woman to get before I can know that you're not going to prosecute me? By the way, I've said we're not going to prosecute any doctor or nurse under these laws. So, um, you know, there is an exception for the life, saving the life of the mother and for ensuring that bodily injury is not done to a woman. Um, and so we're going to issue some guidance on that issue, Ted, on Thursday. On Thursday. Through an attorney general's opinion. All right. Very good. Uh, attorney General Mays, good to see you again. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate the conversation. Thanks, Ted. Same.